the marinade. There's no O in marinade. Let's try it one more time. Ready? One, <laughs> two, three. <laughs> the marinade. <laughs> marrow. Marrow. Marinade. Bone, bone marinade. The marinade. The marinade. With Jason Earl. Well, I hear they're selling flowers in a calling street that they're going for a buck and a half. You can come to the cantina, keep me company. All my faith is in the bottom of my glass. Welcome to The Marinade with Jason Earl, a free-flowing conversation about the creative process with creative people. This is episode 56, and our guest is Eden Archer. Eden is a singer and songwriter originally from Gainesville, Florida. We caught up with Eden at the Gasparilla Music Festival in early March, one of our favorite weekends of the year, just before the country went into lockdown due to the COVID-19 virus. Uh, Some people were still hugging and shaking hands at the time. Others limited their interactions to elbow bumps or just declined contact altogether. Um, Uncertainty, though, was no match for the always beautiful vibes at Gasparilla Music Festival. It was a gorgeous weekend, highlighted for me by the opportunity to record an episode of The Marinade with Eden. Her latest record is called Journey Proud, and it's an outstanding work from start to finish. The song you're hearing in this episode is Scenes from a Spanish Cantina off of Journey Proud. You can find all things Eden and buy her records and keep up with everything else at EdenArcher.com. That's E-D-A-N Archer.com. Everyone, my conversation with Eden Archer. Oh, you don't drink wine anymore? No, no, I quit drinking. Drinking, period? Yeah. Oh, man, that's... Let, let's get into that. If you're all right with it. Yeah. Because so many songs are on the record... All right, we're rolling. Yeah. So many, so many songs on the record are about alcohol. Or yeah, or they're mentioned. So, um, yeah. So what... <laughs> do you, I mean, are you comfortable talking about sure, that? Sure, yeah. Okay. Not like too nitty-gritty, but... Okay. I'm, I'm open about talking about it. I mean, I brought it up, so. Right. So what, so, I mean, it's a great record, and but a lot of songs, I was just looking at my list of notes here, because so many of them are, I mean, there's a song called Alcohol, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Um, and that's what I want to kind of unpack a little bit, but. Sure. How long ago did you stop drinking? Um, well, I've, I've stopped a couple times. This last time was probably over the summer. Okay. When it just started I tend towards depression and anxiety and I just find that I can't drink at all because 
the way my brain is now. <laughs> it yeah. just makes it worse. Right. So, um, I mean, I had plenty of time drinking earlier in my life, and wine was my drink of choice. And yeah, there are a lot of songs about that on the record. Uh, mainly because some of those songs, they kind of span like a 10 year period. Right. Um, some of them are older. And also, it's part of the genre. Like, yeah. There's a lot in country music and blues that's yeah. just about that. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know where that comes well, from. I do. Is it because people who have depression and anxiety are tend prone to, to write songs? Yeah. yeah. Both li- write and listen. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I honestly, I don't know, but it just came it just came it came out that way S- and sometimes it's like a metaphor too like in six wing angel when i say whiskey sing me over well actually no that is literally about my cousin who was an alcoholic okay. and kind of passed away um in not great circumstances so i wrote that song for for him so actually that is not a metaphor that is literal whiskey <laughs> yeah yeah but yeah I don't know. It's just I, a joke that I like to make is if you don't sing about drinking, they they kick you out of the genre. You know, yeah. they're like, nope, can't wear cowboy hat anymore. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. The new record probably won't have as many about that. Maybe I'll have more songs about Topo Chico <laughs> and uh, le- Lemonade. The uh, new record is that something that's on in the works? Um, yeah, I mean. I we played I think three new songs today okay. that I'd like to put on the record. We're just kind of workshopping them live and yeah. working on how I like them to be arranged and how they go over and blah blah blah. Is that part of your process generally that you're workshopping them live and and kind of figuring them out in that way? Yeah, I I like to live with them and put them through their paces and kind of try them out. Sometimes the more you sing it, the melody will change. It'll you know that mm. it'll grow with you a little bit, mm-hmm. and some songs I think have more staying power, and some don't. So, mm-hmm. like I may write something that I just think is clever and cute, and I'm like, oh, I like the song, but then it doesn't have any staying power, and then I'll get bored with it. So, when I write it, whatever it is, I love it. It's like my new toy. Yeah. So, but I don't know if it's worth investing time in. So sometimes I, I let them see. I just wait and see. Is that? You you said you it's like your new toy. Do you do you like it initially all the time when the song is first kind of germinating when it, when it's first born I should say. Yeah, because uh, I don't know. It's I mean I may not think it's like amazing or uh, unique, but it will feel meaningful to me and feel important to me somehow because it's communicating something that I'm feeling. Right. And but it may be like in a weird genre or maybe I I don't know I try to like I used to write a lot of songs that were like a bossa nova beat Mm -hmm. uh, because I love Brazilian music Mm -hmm. and that's why I do have a samba on this record I was just gonna say yep yeah but um, that's scenes from a Spanish cantina is that the one yeah yeah but like if you go way back, I had like reggae songs and I had, I, wow. I just did a lot of experimenting. I experiment yeah. a lot. So sometimes I just want to make sure, make sure that I, that the song is going to be my friend for a while. And it's not just, you know, somebody you meet and hang out with for like a few days and then they're like, ah, that person sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wish there was a way to get a, around that. The, uh, and I think as I get older, I am just way less generous with my um, willingness to, to try new friends. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, I think we need to be back in school or like you always made all of these friends when you're younger and you're at school or like yeah. you're a teenager and you have all this free time. You can just yeah. sit around and be like, let's just play or you can play music and do all kinds of stuff for hours. You have nothing else to do. Yeah. I, I miss that. Um, being grown up is hard in a lot of ways, but it's I think it's like a because I, I waited late to try to start growing up, um, and I'm trying now, you know, and uh, as I approach 40. But I think that once I got to the place mentally that I was ready for it, I'm having a blast with it. Like, I'm really enjoying staying at home with my puppy. You're warming and, up to it. Yeah, cooking a nice dinner. Oh. Paying my mortgage. Yeah. <laughs> I actually really enjoy all that stuff now. And that's okay. I think, you know... Be be proud. Mm-hmm. But There's I think 
Also, as an adult, it's harder to find adventure. I, I find it is. Like, I took a train here, and that was very adventurous for me, and it was super fun, you know? And, and so I was riding the whole time because I was just, like, so excited about everything that I saw. Whereas if I really think about it, my day-to-day life now versus when I was, say, 22 or 23, not nearly as exciting, right? And not nearly as romantic to write about. Are you mining your yeah. daily life, or are you... When you sit down to write, where do where do those themes come from, and where do those ideas come from? Um, it changes in different fa- phases of my life. Like to see what you were saying, like, oh, this is a really romantic setting. It's like yeah. uh, maybe we, we movies and books and songs, and they tend to romanticize specific experiences, like falling in love or. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know, maybe going to a new city or going on a trip or something like that. That's like kind of the classic experience that people think of. But then I think there's so much to be gained from just the regular, mundane, ordinariness of life because most, that's what most human life is. Mm -hmm. But there's actually like huge moments and infinite things hidden in these small daily activities. That's what my song Little Birds is, is. about it's like finding kind of the infinite qualities of the universe in a little bird that just lives in the yard and they don't really they don't really think about it, they don't really do anything but there's there's life and death and there's acceptance and there's survival and love and parenthood and yeah, there's like everything in that one little thing and it's not dramatic and it's not sexy and it's not you know romantic but it's real so I think as you get older you maybe gravitate toward that a little bit more and you don't have to you know, take a crazy train, right, to feel right. it. But sometimes it does help to just break away and get your brain out of the box. I don't know. I, I think I just mine a lot of internal things. Okay. Things that are going on inside my head. Has really. that changed uh, either in, say, quality of experience or in frequency since you stopped drinking? Yeah. <laughs> Can you I say more like, about that? <laughs> I, I think the type of songs that you write cha- changes. Like, uh, maybe uh-huh. I'll be in, like, a mood. and Well, because alcohol is a depressant, too. Right, right. At least for me. Maybe I should have been drinking something else besides wine, because wine would just make uh, you melancholic. It's scientifically a fucking depressant. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, I would tend to write more sad songs. Like when I was trying to pick songs, I worked with a friend of mine who helped me produce Journey Proud and helped me pick the songs for it. Um, she was like, no, you know, we don't need any more sad songs. Uh. <laughs> and I was like, no, this song is cool. Like, let, let, let me put it in the mix and you listen to it and tell me if you like it. And she was like, no, no, we're good. <laughs> because I, I like that stuff. I guess I tend to be like maudlin or brooding and uh. I, I have to really fight against that. So if I write in different moods and different times of the day, I'll get a different mood song, Yeah, which is maybe a little more worth exploring for me right right now too. What do you do for your depression and your anxiety? I take medication for it. You do? I take Paxil, yeah. Yeah. And I uh, I mean, I do a bunch of stuff. It's just a daily struggle. Yeah. I try to get enough sleep. It's really hard to get my sleep schedule. I'm, I just want to stay up all night and sleep all day. Oh, No matter what, that's just my natural. Has um, it always been that way? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, inherited insomnia from my dad too so I mean he's real bad insomnia he won't sleep for days so sometimes oh, wow. so I just I do everything Damn. I can to keep my sleep schedule on to try to eat healthy to try to um, pr- protect my mental space yeah like I'll be like all right I need some time alone I have to go sit by myself for a while it's just that's just how I have to live therapy you, you go to therapy no I'm, I'm just I mean as much as I love to talk about myself <laughs> <laughs> no, that's just something I haven't really done. I just, um, I, I think everybody has their own coping mechanisms and what works for them. I'm not against it at all. Yeah, I just haven't I found. It. Yeah. 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 Maybe it would help. We talk. We talk about it on the show a lot. Um, interestingly enough, of course, like we just discussed, so many songwriters, so many creatives struggle with those two things. I think that's true of anybody, mm-hmm. right? I think that that most of us are dealing with some level of depression or anxiety or something some level but maybe not like a clinical level right like true. i know some people that are definitely true. just okay and i'm really? like yes i do Who, where are these people I hiding do. i don't i don't hang out with any of these people really no yeah well search search them out because 
Sorry, yeah, folks listening <laughs> <laughs> who are friends of mine. <laughs> That's okay, because I'm, I'm one of those other people too. I guess I do know a few now that I think about it, but I think I fixate on, I guess I, I sort of, I like talking about it because it makes me feel less alone in that way. And it helps me to deal with my own anxiety. That's the big thing for me. Depression sometimes, but not mm-hmm. really. It's much more about anxiety. Really? Yeah. It's the worst, isn't it? It's the worst. It's awful. It, but, but because of therapy and because I'm so I'm so hyper aware of it, that I I have coping mechanisms that I use. I'm able to regulate it. I was super anxious this morning. No reason. I'm going to my favorite festival in the world. Just about. It was that I'm train ride you. you were thinking about. So, yeah, I was thinking about how I don't have control over that train. Yeah. That's what my therapist mm-hmm. would tell me. She would say it's a control thing. And the fact that I don't have control over that train is probably what had me anxious. That is that is what the, I have been told that, too. Really? Uh-huh. I have been told that. Like, by more than one person? Or, like, is that a, is that a thing that you are aware of and work on? Um, n- no, because I don't really like to control people if there's a... Or situations. I just... I mean, I, you know what? Actually, I do like to maintain my free agency like if I can't yeah. leave a place if I feel like I'm yes. stuck yes. then I'm like oh why am I prisoner of this environment yes yeah well in th- this setting is a perfect example of that and I'm so I'm here with my friend Emma and I'm so glad that I'm here with her because she's very independent and so am I if I'm at this festival and I feel like going to get some food I don't want to check with Emma and say uh, hey you know I'm gonna go get some food you want anything I hate that is kind that of shit. okay with you yeah Are you- <laughs> or my friends yeah. call it a jexit like when I decide to leave uh- they just know Jason's going to exit, and he may not say anything. That's so He's funny. just gone. When the night's over for me, it's over for Don't me. Don't they call out the Irish yeah, goodbye, Irish too? Yeah. But I like Jexit. Yeah. I mean, yeah, sometimes I just want to go. And when it's time for me mm-hmm. to go, I'm going to go. And I think that's okay. I, I, I think people should be allowed. I, I think different brains, I mean, obviously different brains work in different ways. Like, y- right. you and I may be more sensitive to sensory input for example i'm really sensitive to noise pollution and light pollution Mm. or and even just like regular sounds that most people don't hear and don't notice will be very grating to me and i like i i can't tune out uh background noise for example yeah and i can't tune out background lights yeah i I, everything is of equal importance to my brain So I get very distracted. Like, I cannot have a conversation in the car if their radio's on. I can't do it. Yeah. I have to turn the radio on. Stuff like that. Um, so certain environments will become overwhelming for me af- after a time. And right. I just have to be like, all right, I got to go and listen to some white noise and hide under a blanket for oh like 10 minutes. Oh, my gosh. I can so relate with that. Yeah. Not with the light thing as much. But, well, yeah, no, to some extent with the light thing. But the, the, the hearing thing, if I'm in a, a – like, when we were backstage just now, yeah. we were trying to find a place to, to talk – it, when there's that much music going on and it's that loud, I, it, it's overwhelming to me. It's yeah. difficult for me to under to process what else is happening, even much less to have a conversation. Yeah, because you're just distracted. You can't focus. Yeah. You know, I do have hearing damage too. Oh, uh, okay. And an audiologist told me that part of that thing that I have with the background noise might be because of hearing loss. Because you can't. It's hearing loss is not so much like volume like you can't hear like the volume is lowered but different frequencies and the Uh. inability to separate and distinguish among sounds is a symptom of hearing loss not just the volume so i may have have that too i don't know we don't know what's wrong with (laughs) (laughs) but that that's one of working theory so how does that impact your creative process the fact that you that it is so easy for your brain to get distracted by other things like do you have to find a totally quiet place to write I don't like to write or rehearse if I think anybody can overhear me. Wow. I don't like that at all. Wow. Maybe because like I think that I'm bothering them even if they swear that I'm not, but I, I just don't want to be overheard. I, uh, I need my sonic privacy. Is there any... <laughs> sonic <laughs> privacy? Is there anything to that? Is there any ego wrapped up in that? Like that you don't want them to hear your first draft of something because it, it may not be where you want it to be? I mean, maybe. But even if I'm... Even if I'm just practicing like a song that I already know, I don't know. I just, it feels invasive to me. Yeah. To be overheard. Unless it's somebody that, I, you know what, I, I don't know. I may have to talk to a therapist about that one. I recommend I it. I got a good number. You have to go to Orlando, but I got a good phone number for you. You know what? <laughs> I, if I really traced it back, 
so uh, being kind of like a misfit in the world and um, being a musician, like you try to play and practice, but a lot of people just get irritated with that. Like I remember being told yeah. to be quiet for so many years and I have to find a little tiny corner to sit and write when I was a younger girl like a stairwell. Little did I know that the stairwell amplifies everything. Yeah, so here yeah. I am like hiding in this apartment building in New York in the stairwell, like trying to be quiet and not bo bother anyone. But really I'm in an echo chamber <laughs> or like I was practicing one time at a music school and someone was like, be quiet. So at maybe, a music school? Yes, I know. Maybe I was like singing during the, their lunch time. I don't know. But stuff like that, I, I just hate bothering people. So Man, maybe I have It's a good this. thing you didn't have a hankering for the drums. Oh my God, I could not be a drummer. I, I'm too apologetic to be a drummer. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I can sort of relate to that. I'm really fortunate now in that I have my own little studio space in my house. So um, if I'm doing any podcasting or if I'm working on a song that I'm writing, I can just close the door and I'm not going to bother anybody, you know? And so that's now. That's amazing. It's yeah. important to have. Yeah, now I have that. I've ne I haven't had that until the last two and a half years. What a luxury. It's huge. And I do not take it I don't, for granted. I don't have that. Yeah. I just have to kind of wait till nobody's home. I, That's tough. <laughs> yeah. So well, what do you do if you have an idea? Um, I just kind of, I, I mean, I, I, playing acoustic is one way, of, mm. but I really like to play pl plugged in. Oh, so. okay. But, you know, for the past six months, I haven't really been writing, if I'm honest with myself. Why since not? I moved, I I don't know why. I think I've just been dealing with other stuff. It's a lot, probably the longest time in my life that I've gone without writing. I don't know why. I just went through a big grieving process. I when my dog died, oh, which I'm sorry. I mean, it might sound like that's a trivial thing, but for no. me, he was like my buddy for yep. a long time. Yeah. And I, I don't. So I think that affected me more than I knew. Um, I mean, I, as, as soon as he passed away, I wrote, I wrote like five songs that were all about my dog dying. Yeah. But of course, I'm not going to do like a, a dying dog record. I don't think anybody wants to hear oh, that. I would, I would buy the shit out of you that You would record. not to Yeah. To oh, my God. Eden Archer, a dying dog <laughs> record? <laughs> I would snatch that Oh, up. my God. Okay, maybe I'll revisit People listening to this are laughing their asses off because they know how obsessed I am with my dog. And, oh, really? Yeah, and we put down our 16-year-old boy two, almost two years 16? ago. 16? Yeah. So impressive. Yeah, and it was the hardest thing. It was because it was like a year of thinking it was time, and that decision is the hardest fucking decision. Mm -hmm. Cause you love having him there and you, and you love that experience, but at some point it becomes selfish and it's so hard to know. You, he can't tell you when how he's it, feeling, yeah. you know, he's hurting, but how bad is he hurting? Mm -hmm. And you know, when we finally made that decision, it was just, there's a whole series of podcasts where I'm like, one of them, I break down and, and start crying actually, oh. right before we had to put him down. There's one where I'm, I'm actually in tears. So your dying dog record um, may fall on deaf ears elsewhere, but it will not for this guy. I'm going to make it just for you. <laughs> oh, that would I'm going to make amazing. it just for you and your 16 year old baby. Yeah, it's uh, it's a very hard decision to make. I, I feel like a lot of times people kind of make that decision too soon. Like is the mm. moment they think they're suffering a little bit. Yeah. But it's like, well, uh, the quality of life like Luke was pretty good until the end he was he, he was eating and he was walking but he was coming right up against it and I I called the people one day and they were gonna come and then I put him off because I'm like no look he just went we for a walk too. yeah you're like today's not your day <laughs> buddy not day, dude. He's, like, not he, today. he's like wagging his tail that day right yes he jumps and he you hasn't jumped the right in choice. Months. you're like okay yeah he's having a good day today yeah yeah because they also, and I don't understand how this is, it's this mystical connection between animal and other animal, I guess. But the fact that they, they know when it's time. when they it's know. He let they us know. They accept. He finally let us know. That's their lesson. Mm -hmm. uh, we learn so much from animals. They accept their, their death and their time. Yeah. Uh, humans fight it so much. So like much. Even an, uh, an animal that's, that's prey, when they're in the mouth of a predator, they will fight. But eventually they will. They accept they it. They will release. Yeah. And... and just succumb to it and I, I think that's humans you know we we rage rage against the dying of the light as they say yeah. so as there's a lot of lessons so to be learned from our dogs our little buddhas <laughs> yeah I, I just i haven't really thought about it in that way death is a constant fear of mine it's where my anxiety is rooted mm. and so um 
and, and, and I, if I'm being honest with myself, I guess most of the things I write in some way come back to death. Um, even if they're celebratory songs, they're just cel- celebrating a life that's passed on or something like that. Um, and so it's such, a, it's a, such a constant theme in my life. I never really thought about it as a lesson from, I never thought about the lesson from Tommy's passing, for example, oh. being that way. Wow. Did you lose somebody when you were young that was close to you? You know, I, I didn't have any loss until I was in my like mid-teens. And then I lost one or two people, especially there were people that I wasn't real, real close with, but I was friends with that were my age. Like we had, a, for whatever reason, I grew up in Ocala and a lot of loss happened right in a row for mm-hmm. that town. And I guess in the moment, especially as a teenager, I didn't realize it. Now that I look back on it, that happened. And then right about in my early 20s, tons of people, especially people that I was super close with. And I do think that informs a lot of how well, that I approach sounds like it. a lot. It yeah. was a lot. Yeah. Maybe you've had a higher than usual incidence of that. Some people are very lucky. They don't they don't lose people. Right. Uh, like until later but we all do in the end that's yeah the, that's our yeah. commonality well and that should be comforting you know for a lot of people that's very comforting and for me it's not it's, it's like terrifying. the great e- the, the the great equalizer yeah yeah it's definitely terrifying i think in the country folk blues tradition there's a lot about that too yeah um i don't know why maybe because it was kind of the music of um what would you call the working class, mm-hmm. the underclass? It's not. They, maybe they were really close, close to it. So you yeah. write about the things that you're that, that you're close to. Right. Um. Yeah. Well, anyway. <laughs> well, anyway. Well, um. Anyway. <laughs> oh. You're, this is a pretty serious for such a sunny day. Dang. I know, but this happens. Um, I'm not surprised we ended up here. Uh, <laughs> the, especially after listening to Journey Proud, which is wonderful, by the way. And I'm sorry I haven't I've taken this long to compliment it. <laughs> no, <laughs> you said record. it. You said it in the beginning okay, that you good. liked it. Well, thank good. you. And there's there's songs about dying on Journey Proud, you know. Well, and I wanted to ask you about a couple of the songs. Like, there's only one co-write, and that co right? Correct? Yeah, and that's with your mom. That's my mom. Is mom a musician? Yeah, both my parents are. Okay. My dad taught me to finger pick, and my oh, wow. mom, uh, she used to play dulcimer when she was younger too. Oh, and wow. They 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 both sing and play and write, and we're just we co- co-write. She actually helped with a few other songs, kind of the lyrics. I just, but not as much as alcohol, and she just was like. I said, okay, I'm definitely going to cre- credit you on this one. She didn't really care about, like, percentages. She's not registered with ASCAP or anything. Right. But I'm like, no, this has to be because we wrote it together. So um, her but her, her fingerprints are all over that. She wrote a lot of lyrics. What is it? Do you typically write alone and it just happened that you and mom had that idea in that moment? Yeah, we would just sit around and um, drink wine and write play and yeah. write write together. I do typically write alone. Okay. I'm not one of those people that's like, hey, what are you doing today? You want to get get together and write? Okay. I just don't. I I don't know why. I, um, I've had a few people that I've been able to do that with over the years, but normally it's just, it's just me. I'm very, very solitary. I'm just a solitary person. Um, but I do write with my mom a lot and Maybe because she's my mama, she can just order me around and be like, play this chord. Oh, be like, no, uh-huh. that doesn't work. Play the other one. <laughs> I'm like, oh, God. But other people can't do that with you? <laughs> they probably could. Maybe okay. they just don't try. No. Well, well, I mean, would you be receptive to it, I guess, is what I was getting at. If we were co-writing, yeah. Okay. I used to be in a band with a friend of mine, and we super gelled a lot. But Oh, wow. Um, I don't know. It's just It just works out. Some people only have one person that they write with too like they just find this one person and that's their writer and then that's amazing i'm i'm open to other stuff we'll see that's i think that's incredible when people find those kind of creative partnerships that click that way it's such a vulnerable thing very it's a relationship you know it's a different kind of relationship but it's a relationship and if you have to be willing to put yourself out there in a way that even if i'm creating something i'm showing to somebody else 
to me, that's less intimate than if I'm co-writing with somebody, which I very rarely yeah. do. Yeah, no, that it, you're right about that. And I think what's really important is that two people have to value the same tradition and they have to have the same goal. Yeah, like, oh, okay. Like if somebody comes, like the reason why my mom is a good person to write with is because we like the same songs and she'll be like, listen to this lyric. And I'm like, wow. That's amazing. Rather than somebody else, we'll find a song, and, and I'm like, yeah, it's a good song, like maybe, but that's not. It doesn't really speak to my heart as much as another one. And she's trained me a lot too to value what I didn't used to value when I was younger. Like, if someone had been like, "Oh, you're country," I'm like, "No." Oh, interesting. I'm not. Interesting. Even you, though I, you are. I, I played the same. <laughs> some of the songs on my record are from like ten years, like ten years ago. It's oh, the wow. Same songs. Uh, not all of them, but some of them that I went back and I'm like, yeah, you know, well, let's let's put this on there. I did wear cowboy boots, just not hats. But now I'm like, I'm not afraid of that word anymore. It's Good. fine. Yeah. Uh, and now that I discovered Americana, because to me, con- country was country radio, yeah, which was not what I do. Right. But then when I discovered like. I'm like, oh, well, they, they mean, like, the older country and, like, yeah. the folk and yeah. a little bit of this alt-rock and then mixed together. And I'm like, yeah. okay, that, yeah, that's There's me. The blues invo- the blues really infused in there and the, the, the rock, uh, classic rock kind of influence. Yes. And just so much. That there's so much great music now in that vein. It's amazing. That's where rock music is going, too, yeah. because... Uh, pop radio, I think, is very electronic oriented, and uh, which is awesome. But sure. it's just like most music with guitars and maybe like analog drums are gonna be. They're kind of like the rock station or this Americana stuff. The the music on non-com Americana stations is amazing, and yeah. I, I really hope that um, pop radio or commercial radio kind of expands and lets some, some of that stuff in. Because honestly. It gets a little bit homogenized. There's just great stuff, but you know, they have to play like more variety of songs. Like yeah. you listen to the radio and you'll be flipping or like like when I drive from state to state and I'm like, Oh, yeah. I just like can I hear this song again? Like yeah, there's so many yeah. good songs out there, dude. Just yeah. put some of them on. Seriously. And the women too. We need to get the women on the radio and the commercial radio. Well, so great. Those are the two other things I wanted to talk about. One about being a woman in the industry and, and what maybe what lessons people who are listening or people like me who cover music. One of my commitments recently has been to really heavily lean toward having women on the show. Um, Cause I realized after the first like 20 episodes or so yeah. that it was just white guys with guitars. Oh, and that was not intentional. It's just like, I did it. I did that. And I went, well, that's not what I want. That's not what I meant to do. It just happens because <laughs> yeah. that's, kind of like what's out there and yeah. that's what you see that's what's at the forefront you gotta be intentional i'm yes i'm very happy that you noticed that i've had a couple friends like a friend of mine that used to book a venue and he was like i realized i did this tribute night and it was all like white guys and then yeah. i'm like let me just let me diversify this lineup up a seriously. little seriously yeah well and i think we've done a i, I don't want to pat us on the back yet but we we have done a pretty good job of of making sure that we're booking women i don't there are other things that i want i i want it to be more than just now now i've got a lot of white girls with guitars and again like i want to get which is great there's a lot of us too there's a lot of y'all too and you're wonderful and i love you but i also want you know black guys who play drums and you know i want uh authors who are pansexual and you know i got I want all of that. I'm not going to stop with white guys with guitars. That's not what I mean. Right. You know, and I think that navigating that water is interesting because I fucking, I am a white guy with guitar. Right. Like, I fucking love us, too. Right. You know, but there's more to the world than that. And there's more to the creative process than that. What are you getting down on now? Like, what what are you inspired by art? Uh, what art is inspiring at the moment? Either music or a film you've seen or a show you're watching? What I what really got my just uh, skin tingling was watching the um, the history of country music, the Ken Burns oh, the Ken documentary. Burns now I cannot speak about it intelligently yet because I've only made it through the first two episodes. Okay. Because I've been waiting to watch it with with, with someone, but okay. those first two episodes were like like they start out with with the folk music and the Appalachian music and I was like oh my god and that just kind of lit a fire like that stuff I love old folkloric stuff that you can bring out from the past and make it new yeah um, at the moment uh, I don't 
You know what? At the moment, I don't really know. I I don't know. I think that part of me is like kind of asleep. I I, I need to listen. There's, there's a lot of albums that I've been meaning to listen to. I need to listen to the new Drive By Truckers album. It's great. Oh, my God. Is it so yeah, great? Yeah. I I know there's single Armageddon, but I really want to hear the rest of them. Yeah. So um, I need to hear that, and then probably I'll say that. Yeah. Once they... Uh, you will. <laughs> once, yeah, you I, will. once I hear that, because they, they always just make me want to, like, plug in, yeah. turn up, <laughs> whatever, get a beer or lemonade. Yeah, yeah. And, they're uh, one of my favorites. They're, they're so two, honest. One of my they're two or three so favorites. They're so yeah. yeah. I can't believe some of the stuff they write about. They just yeah. have no fear. It's like, yeah. damn, did you really just write a song about that? Yeah. It's impressive. Yeah. Like, they are just naked souls. Yeah. I love it. That's awesome. Well, yeah. And this has been such a pleasure. So nice to talk to you, thank man. You thank so you much. so much for hanging out with me yeah. and being so honest and forthcoming. <laughs> it's and, been a blast. And for listening to my record. Your record is wonderful. Folks thank can you. find it. Um, out there on the interwebs yes. make an order a physical copy from your website and they should because it's wonderful That's right. thank you man <laughs> right. thank you so much thank you cheers Eden Archer, y'all. Thank you so much, Eden. Thank you all for listening. You can find more Marinade at marinadepodcast.com. We have links to our feature and bonus episodes there, as well as concert photography and written pieces, such as the one I wrote about my trip to Gasparilla Music Festival. And uh, recently, my tribute to the late, brilliant John Prine. Rest in peace, John. That was a tough loss for all of us. Um, I'm just so grateful that I had an opportunity to see John play a few times. Uh, never had a chance to meet him, but I did get to see him play on three separate occasions, and he always put on a clinic. Give us a follow over on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Tell a friend about the show. Subscribe and give us a five-star rating on your podcast app. Those are all free, easy ways you can support what we do. If you really like what we do and you can swing it, please consider joining our Patreon community. For just a few bucks a month, you can gain access to our Patreon-only show, Jason's Journey where I talk about the moments that have shaped my creative life. We also release episodes early and post projects that allow us to connect with the show on a deeper level. All right, y'all, it's time for what I'm getting down on, the segment of the show where I talk about the art that is inspiring me at the moment. My partner Chris and I watched the best film that I've seen in a long while the other day. Um, Jojo Rabbit is the name of the film. It received a lot of buzz during award season, and for good reason, it's uh, shot kind of like uh, Wes Anderson meets the Coen brothers. It's absolutely stunning to watch. Uh, it's a dark comedy. We, we laugh the whole time, but it's really heavy. Um, just a great, great film. It's well acted. It's well written. It's just per- almost perfect. I mean, it's, it's the first film that I've seen in weeks, maybe months, that made me feel super hungry to create. I mean, I've been motivated to do things anyway, but um, this, I haven't seen a film like that that just fired me up so much uh, in a really long time. So Jojo Rabbit, I can't say enough about it. I've been listening to a lot of cool stuff. Um, I've been listening to the debut record from the band Rookie. Um, man, they're cool. They, they remind me of a cross between Gringo Star and Susto. Um, it's just a really, really cool record. And I just booked an interview with them. So I'm really stoked for that conversation next week. And then also another person I'm going to get... The great honor of sitting down with next week is Michael McDermott. Well, not sitting down with directly, of course, because we're going to be distance interviewing. But um, Michael McDermott is one of those songwriters that, um, for whatever reason, flies under the radar. He's just brilliant. And he has an album on the way called What in the World, which I highly recommend. Um, And I recommend his records in general. Uh, They're all great. And he's just a fantastic songwriter. And then Andrew Bryant, um, I've mentioned Water Liars before, um, but Andrew Bryant's solo stuff is also really amazing, and um, he has a new album coming out on May 1st 
The first single is called Lucky Cigarette. It's a great, great song. And the record's called Sentimental Noises. Um, so I'm really looking forward to that one as well. There's just so much great music, and, and we all have so much time to listen to it right now. Um, so I'm, I'm just having a blast listening to music. You know, I've actually not really even been listening to very many podcasts. Uh, I went for a run today and listened to the Well Read Boys with Roy Wood Jr., who's so fucking funny. Um, and, and they, of course, those guys always do a great job anyway. I, I religiously listen to that show. But normally, you know, I'm consuming podcasts kind of intermittently with music. But lately, there's just so many great records that are coming out. I'm still spinning Caleb Cottle's record that is, I think it came out a week ago now. Gosh, it seems like a year ago. But uh, just wonderful, wonderful music. Um, Lily Hyatt's new record is great. There's just so much music that uh, folks are creating. And I'm, I'm super grateful for um, for the fact that people are keeping it keeping it going i mean it's tough um a lot of folks and and i get it a lot of folks can't find the the time or the space to create even though we all technically have the time just finding that headspace and that emotional capital to be able to to make something right now is difficult so i'm grateful to everybody who's able to put it together and i totally understand folks who can't um if if that's you if you're struggling you know that's okay (laughs) please 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 be be good to yourself but if you are creating man keep it going right like if it's good for you right now keep it going i'm i'm trying i'm i'm doing as much as i can and i'm trying to get as many episodes as i can out to y'all um and it's so interesting to follow this kind of progression of things where we had the broadcast episode back in february and things were just totally normal almost they were pretty normal. And then, um, and then this one was like, right. I recorded this right before we were like, Oh shit. Something's something's bigger is happening here. And, uh, bigly as, as the man says. And, uh, and, and, and he, and he started to fumble everything as you expect he would. And, you know, things started to, you know, local government started to really struggle. And, uh, right about then, you know, I, I remember there were cases in, of COVID-19 virus in, uh, in, in Tampa area at the time that I went over there and I took a train and looking back on it, it's like, wow, I don't know how smart that was. But, um, at the time it didn't seem like a big deal, you know, so it's so interesting to, to, to listen to these episodes that I've released or I mean recorded rather, and that I will be releasing and just kind of follow the progression of how all this is played out. Um, and I mean, I'm looking forward to getting past this and being able to look back on it and kind of reflect, you know, um, but for the moment I'm motivated to create. So I'm going to do my best to get episodes out to y'all as often as possible. Once a week has been my goal. Um, I fell a little bit behind that, but I think I'm back on track to do that. Matt Woods is still up, Daryl Scott as well. And then, uh, Brian Fallon, plus of course the ones I just mentioned, uh, the band Rookie we're, I'm recording with next week and Michael McDermott. Uh, really excited for both of those conversations. Like so honored that you know, that either one of them is interested in talking to us. Um, and uh, so go listen to those those folks ahead of time. Rookie's already out. That record's already out. And then Michael's record will come out later. But he has a whole a whole catalog you can get down on um, that I highly recommend you checking out. All right, y'all, we love you. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for your support. Until next time, go out and create something if you can. Cheers, y'all.